Just a couple quick disclaimers before we begin. Number one, do not go to war with anyone mentioned in this video. And number two, because this series' purpose is to critique and comment on the artwork present in it, it falls under fair use. And also, some announcements. During the time I've worked on this series, I've come to think of it being a machine that I constantly mess with in order to get it working properly. The DeviantArt Critique Show is pretty much one of my first forays into becoming a YouTuber, and some people have come to me with some criticism that has helped me out. I will say here that if you do have some criticism for me, put it in the comments. I will look and ponder about it in order to embedder this show. That being said, I have two things specifically to say here. Firstly, I will be taking a break from reviewing people in the Giantess community. Four out of this previous six episodes have covered members from said community, and I think a bit more variety is in order. If my current schedule still holds, I will not cover a member of that community until episode 15. And lastly, I would like to know your thoughts on the background music that I put in this video specifically. Episode 6 was a bit of an experimental one in terms of the stuff that I put in the background, and I've come to think that slower, more ambient sorts of tracks fit better than the ones I put in Episode 6. Let me know if that assessment is right. And with that out of the way, on with the show. So, who are we going to review today? Hmm? Well, I did mention I have a schedule, so uh, let's take a look at it. Oh. Okay, it appears that I'll be reviewing an artist by the name of Mati. Yes, with three T's. Mati, like the gal from last episode, hails from the fabled land of Japan. In my opinion, he is criminally underrated, having a mere 26 watchers despite being on the site for 10 years. With that being said, what is his art like? Well, I just have one word for you. Doraemon, Doraemon, Doraemon. That's right, it appears that Monty really, really likes drawing Doraemon. Normally I would criticize that, which I shall do still, but honestly, Monty's habit of drawing one thing and one thing only isn't nearly as bad as someone's like, say, Marino Gaides. This is because that Monty draws Doraemon in varying scenarios. You've got Doraemon in the big city, Doraemon being the foundation for a said city, and Doraemon shaped holes in the clouds, because why not? The art itself is actually really good, hence why I called Monty criminally underrated when I introduced him to you. Like I said, he draws Doraemon in varying, sometimes surreal scenarios that a Japanese children's character would not be in normally. It's this sort of juxtaposition that I really like about Monty. It subverts the normal perception of the character in such a way as to recontextualize Doraemon in the artwork itself. I think that Monty's art style really helps with that. Other than, well, Doraemon, the way Monty draws things is quite realistic. As if it was a painting done by Monet or someone, I don't know. However, I have neglected to introduce Monty's magnum opus. Ladies and gentlemen, behold, Windora Ricker. Based on the album cover for Apex Twins Window Licker, when Dora Ricker is a true masterpiece of the 21st century. The juxtaposition between the child-friendly Doraemon and the less innocent Window Licker album cover is in full effect here, which adds an undeniable value to this piece. Mati has paid special attention to the way the original album cover works, and has drawn it in such a way that his style shines outward, clearly differentiating it from the art it was based on. Overall, I would say Windora Ricker is among one of the holiest relics that I have uncovered on this website. God bless you, Mati. And with that out of the way, I should list out my final recommendations to Mati. Except that I have only one, and that is to vary your art a little bit. Like I said before, you do draw Doraemon in varying situations, which does help with the variety in your artwork. 
However, I would like to see you draw other characters from the franchise in similar situations to the ones you've put Doraemon in. I understand that these characters might not be as popular as Doraemon, but I feel like the juxtaposition between said characters and the weird, non-child-friendly scenarios you would put them in would still make your art just as valuable as your Doraemon art. I sincerely hope that you're still around, though, and I also sincerely hope that you continue to make art. Well, that does it for today. You can check me out on Twitter.com if you want to, but otherwise, I've been your host. Xenon Quark 996. Have a nice day.